Alright guys, welcome back to another stream. Uh, I wasn't really planning on streaming tonight. I think that's what I've said for like <laughs> at least half of the streams I've done this month in October 2021. But uh, yeah, I figured we, <laughs> we're pretty much in the very last stretch of October and I've been streaming a lot more often than usual this month. Um, I figured I might as well just, you know, just crank out a couple more before... Uh, before Halloween. So here we are with DMC Devil May Cry. Uh, this is a game I actually just finally played for the first time a couple of nights ago. Uh, I spent uh, the course of two nights running through the game on the uh, medium difficulty level, or at least medium as far as the initial three difficulties are concerned. You do unlock a couple of higher difficulty levels, but um, yeah, I ran through it and, uh, you know, I wrote this game off when it first came out. I was like, oh man, I really don't like the direction they took the series in. Um, this was intended, I guess, to be sort of like a, uh, a reboot or a refresh of the series um, or a, a, <laughs> a refreshing experiment with the series, at least. Uh, a lot of people like myself also wrote it off, and then Capcom kind of went back to their roots with Devil May Cry 5 later on, uh, several years later. And um, But, you know, that said, uh, there's a, a good friend of mine uh, who's also a gamer. He actually really enjoyed this game when it came out, and I generally trust his taste in games. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and buy this game and give it a try. And I ended up really, uh, really enjoying this game. Uh, it does have some stuff in it that not all players are going to agree with, like it's got uh, copious amounts of cursing, and uh, the whole story and theme takes a more, I guess, sort of realistic uh, direction. You know, it takes place more in, like, the real world, uh, you know, cities and stuff like that, and, you know, it's a little more gritty and raw. Um, it's, it's very much less like the original Devil May Cry games in terms of, like, uh, setting and theme and story and stuff like that. Uh, but you do have, you know, a lot of your same characters like Dante and Virgil and stuff like that. And, um, the, the, the visual design in this is still, I think, really awesome. Uh, especially once, you, like, you're going, uh, you know, into what they call limbo in this game, as you guys will see. And the combat is just a ton of fun. It's, it's a really, like, nice playing game. Uh, there's a lot of variety, and unlike something like Devil May Cry 5 that came later, you're not bouncing back and forth between a bunch of different characters. Like, you basically play as Dante, you play as him for the entire playthrough. His arsenal gets pretty massive, uh, but you're just with that one character for the entire playthrough, like in classic Devil May Cry 1 uh, or something like that. So, but... Um, yeah, this one actually kind of surprised me. Uh, there is a definitive edition that you can get, uh, which is for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. And uh, they basically raised the base resolution from 720p to 1080p. And they boost the frame rate from 30 to 60. Uh, so those versions play a lot nicer. And uh, there's a lot of uh, gameplay balancing that they did as well. And so the intent with this game for me personally was to try to play the game, the, the original game, in its original incarnation, and then later on do the definitive edition uh, to see, you know, how much better it is. And uh, so, yeah, uh, I wanted to start small. Uh, for anybody curious about this game, if you don't want to pay for the definitive edition, which is honestly, from what I understand, the best way to play the game, uh, these old console versions for like PS3 and 360 are relatively cheap. I picked up my uh, my box copy on, on PS3 for like six bucks just a couple weeks ago. So, um, so yeah, it's cheap to acquire. Uh, for anyone that just wants to throw away some money and, you know, give it a chance, uh, it's not going to break the bank, thankfully, unlike a lot of, uh, you know, games for actual retro consoles. Um, this is this is pretty affordable. So, but uh, yeah, had a really good time with it. Looking forward to going through it again. I actually started out my second playthrough last night on Twitch, and I just blitzed through like the first six maps. And then today, I was just like, you know what? Let's just do a full YouTube stream. Um, I'm comfortable enough with the game to where I think I should be able to go through the whole thing uh, in one sitting uh, without too much uh, trouble. So now I'm gonna go ahead and hit start here. There are a couple of caveats. Uh, for one, I'm gonna be skipping a lot of the cutscenes and stuff like that um, because. A full playthrough of this game is like six and a half hours based on the long play videos I pulled up on YouTube, and that's with the cutscenes. So if I chop out a lot of the cutscenes, we might be able to get this thing done in like two, uh, sorry, not two, but uh, like four to four and a half or five hours as opposed to six and a half plus. Um, that's also not counting dying. 
Um, all the videos I saw, I'm pretty sure, were like deathless. <laughs> so six and a half hours with all the cutscenes, deathless. Um, and also, there's also a lot of copyrighted music. Uh, and I'm not sure how many copyright claims I'm going to get on this damn thing. Um, but that's also a, a factor. Granted, I'm not going to be able to avoid it because, you know, um, you know, there is the copyrighted music in the gameplay itself. But, um, you know, if there's less that I'm featuring in the video, as in like, you know, uh, you know, you don't hear it in the cutscenes because I'm skipping through them, then, you know, uh, that's just better for me. Also, there are there is copious amounts of cursing in this, especially in the cutscenes. Um, and YouTube is kind of kind of strict these days with their uh advertiser friendly guidelines and whatever and if there's too much cursing and too much violence and stuff like that even if it's a video game um they'll flag my channel for not being advertiser friendly and so um i don't want to veer in that direction too much now normally i don't cover games that are are like this with like tons of cursing i think the last one i did was like splatterhouse on ps3 many years ago um tons of cursing in that game as well but generally it's not the sort of thing i do i did mark the first line in my stream like uh fyi parents this is not kid friendly or something like that so you have been warned um and yeah what i'll do is uh you know because i just beat the game last night actually and then went through and played it some more um you know i should be able to give you a synopsis of the story as we go through the game so for those of you guys that are really interested in the story for some reason i'll kind of give you an idea of like why we're we're at wherever we're at and you know why we're doing whatever we're doing so um, but with that, let's go ahead and hit a new save. So I'm going to start a brand new fresh game. Um, the intent with this game is for you to finish it, but then go back and play it again on the same save file, um, uh, with your upgraded arsenal and stuff like that. So there are doors and, and, you know, platforms that we can't reach on a fresh run, but I just want to show you what like a fresh run is like, and I'll sort of explain the various things that we could get on, you know, subsequent runs on the same save file. So... So yeah, uh, we've got a lot of options and stuff like that. Um, so I like to invert my camera. I'm going to turn the vibration functionality off and I'm going to turn tutorials off. This game has a lot of tutorials, but you can disable them, thankfully. Um, on your first playthrough, I do recommend keeping the, the uh, tutorials on because this is a very mechanically dense game. Uh, there is a, a lot of stuff to do, uh, mechanically speaking, on this game. You have uh, tons of different weapons. Uh, tons of different firearms. You've also got different types of parries and dashing and and all sorts of crazy stuff. And uh, it <laughs> it'll take you more than a single playthrough to get used to it all. I'm not I'm still not used to it all. So you're not going to see me parrying like crazy and and doing like perfect time dodges a lot and stuff like that. And a lot of combos that I could potentially do, I just I because I've only finished the game once. Like you're not going to see me doing like crazy crazy advanced combos. And there are crazy crazy advanced combos you can do in this game it gets pretty crazy so um give me a second here actually you know what let me go ahead and just back out and i'll go ahead and start a new game it's gonna take a little while to load the uh first section so you start off with human mode devil hunter and uh nephilim and what i'm gonna do is devil hunter i can probably do nephilim just fine i actually went up to stage six last night on this difficulty without a problem i don't think i died once so um but just to be safe we're gonna do devil hunter which is the uh you know, default difficulty level uh, I played on when I first went through the game. So, would you like to see tutorial messages as you play? No. And we'll go ahead and uh, let this load. Now, I actually really like the intro for this game. Uh, I like the music style and all that stuff, but uh, again, I'm going to skip through it all. So, um... Hey, Sadr, welcome back. Savator, welcome back. Conga. Uh, Conga thought that the PS3 hardware would handle the, uh, the game running uh, at 60 FPS. Yeah, unfortunately, it does not. Neither does the Xbox 360. They're both capped at 30 FPS. Okay, Scarlet, no backseat driving at all. Otherwise, I'm giving you the boot. Friendly warning. <laughs> friendly, friendly warning. No, no boots tonight, okay, Scarlet? You love the first trailer song. Glad you finally tracked it down. Yeah, I actually want to look into these artists, actually. For some reason, I thought the... Um, the I, I've seen these names around, in especially, especially like the gothic industrial scene. But... Um, it... Um, 
yeah, for some reason I thought they were more uh, dance-driven, and I guess they are, but there's a lot of guitar riffs in this game, so yeah, I definitely want to check out their music. And that was so obviously a joke. I was hoping it was a joke, but I wasn't really sure. <laughs> Okay, so we basically just start off with our sword, and uh, we have a very basic amount of moves. We can hit triangle to attack normally, and then you can hold circle to do a uh, launcher. A lot like, uh, you know, classic Devil May Cry. If, you know, for those of you guys familiar with previous games in the series, the combat is a lot like what you're used to. And it is, it is a lot of fun. And I really enjoy this first level too, the, um... The amusement park is just, uh, just a visual treat. I love it. So, you know, when you're not just, uh, whacking enemies, uh, some of these rooms do have, uh, you know, like, little pouches you can try to destroy. Like that right there. Those gives us good, uh, blah. Man, I can't talk. It's been a really weird long day for me today. Um, those will give us, uh, red orbs, and we can use the red orbs to purchase things later on. And this is just a section where we just run across. There's a lot of this over the course of the game. So just don't fall down. But yeah, we're in what's called Limbo. And this is, you know, like, kind of like an alternate dimension that layers, you know, sort of either you could say on top or beneath the real world. And, um... And now we have Ebony and Ivory, which are, you know, Dante's signature guns. You just press square to use your firearms. Now, I actually just did a parry there completely by accident. You can actually parry just by attacking uh, enemies or, or projectiles at just the right time. Oops, it's trying to jump, and I didn't jump at the right time. Did another parry, and another. Yeah, the combat in this game is very satisfying, um, but I do recommend trying to explore the different areas and, uh, you know, destroying any objects that you see. Sometimes you'll see these little spiders on the ground. You shoot them, they give you some red orbs. And again, you buy stuff with the red orbs. Uh, you know, later on in the game. And what I'm going to end up doing is probably saving, uh, you know, my red orbs for a little bit later. But, you know, you'll find some objects on the side, kind of like these right here. They usually have, like, these red vines on them. You attack them, they'll give you red orbs as well. So it's good to just try to explore around. This is a door that we can't actually access on our first playthrough, at least not on this level. Um, we basically have to open this up with a, a different weapon uh, later on. That one's actually for the, the gauntlets. Um, I don't know the exact names for each weapon, but you basically get these gauntlets, kind of like uh, you do in previous Devil May Cry games. And uh, you can uh, bash through the wall with the, with the gauntlets. So um, These guys right here, you can uh, attack them as well. It actually tracks how many you found over the course of the game. And they'll give you a bigger amount of uh, red orbs. And I found out last night, you can actually come on over here and get yourself a key. Uh, there are several keys uh, littered uh, all over the game. There's different types. This is a copper key. Uh, there are different, like, tiers of keys. There's an argent key, and I believe there's also a gold key. And um, the different types of keys you get designate, like, how difficult a bonus area will be. And we will find a uh, bonus area, I think, uh, later on in this level. We just have to have that key. Alright. Uh, so, um... Savator says, interesting, not quite what I expected. Looks good. Um... Michael says there is no Dante Must Die mode in this game. I believe you actually unlock that, Michael. Pressing R1 will allow you to, uh, you know, dodge roll. 
very important maneuver. You can do uh, what's called perfect dodges, and they'll actually boost your uh, combo rating in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Now, I'm trying not to launch enemies into the air, because I can actually run into that, you know, whirly gig or whatever the hell it is up top. And when you take a hit, it actually, uh, you know, reduces your combo rating. Savage! Hey, Brent, happy Halloween as well. Halloween, the best time of the year. For me, anyway. All right, um, let's see. Oh, I just went backwards. Just want to make sure I'm going the right way so I can get, you know, I mean, not just the right way, but like, you know, I want to get uh, any extra items I can find uh, throughout these levels. That way I can upgrade my character faster and more efficiently. Yeah, so one of the big downsides to playing the original 360 or PS3 version of the game is that it does run at 720p, 30 FPS, and so it doesn't look nearly as crisp as, uh, you know, modern, modern games do. This is still technically a modern game. I mean, it's eight years old at this point, but, um, you know, modern titles haven't changed all that much. Uh, from a technological standpoint, outside of like you know revol uh, resolution and, and and stuff like that, you know some extra visual features. But you know you look at a game like this, and then you look at uh, I don't know like Devil May Cry Five, and it's like oh yeah, it, you know they they look pretty similar in a lot of ways. So, but uh, these things right here, you can press circle to use them, and as you kill enemies and stuff like that, you'll get these upgrade points. And what I'm going to do is upgrade my ability. I'm going to do, uh, 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 I don't know. Do I want to do enemy step or shoot level two? Or... Actually, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to upgrade rebellion uh, with, uh, let's see, roulettes. Let's, uh, let's actually just do a uh, hacker level two. This allows my, uh, my basic combo string to be more powerful. You can buy items. Uh, I'm going to save for the health cross, which uh, when you get a certain amount of them, I think it's... Um... Oh, actually, this is the full cross. Okay. Yeah, so if you get the full cross, it'll actually extend your health by 10%. Later on, you'll get health cross shards, where you have to collect, I think, four of them to form a full cross, which will then boost your health by another 10%. So I'd rather get the health boost than, you know, buy some items. But I've already gotten a small vital star and I've already gotten a gold orb. Um, so I'm already good on items. I'm not going to really need them. All right, cutscene. So the big thing here is that, like, uh, Dante is just woken up uh, by uh, this girl... Now, you can do a slight air dash right from the very beginning. You just press, uh, you know, R1 in the air. It's pretty handy, you know. Um, later on, we will get the ability to actually, like, truly air dash. But for now, we just have, like, a little rinky-dink, you know, air strafe dash sort of thing. <laughs> hey, Darren. Uh, no, sorry, man. I've... I've had plenty of Castlevania 3, enough to, to last me a while. <laughs> Alright, so you can actually parry that thing back at him, but that's the hunter in there shooting that uh, that hook shot at me. And hey, Zeon, welcome back. Yeah, I actually watched a video earlier today, and you can parry uh, tons of attacks by bosses. It's pretty crazy. Keep moving. All right, there's our door, and let's just double check over here. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. So we'll go ahead and do this. If you can find the keys in this game, it's really good to do it, and it's really good to play these bonus areas because you get, you'll get like permanent upgrades through them, like, uh, you know, the health crosses and things like that. Hey, Mike, welcome back. Hey, Azusa and Office. 
So, Copper Air Brawl. Uh, kill all enemies within the time limit. Enemies only take damage in the air. So I just have to kill enemies fast and basically just juggle them a lot. Whoops. Now, one issue with this original version of the game is that uh, you don't really have a lot of camera control. Like, yeah, you can use the right analog stick to move the camera around, but it does have this sort of like auto-targeting, auto-lock-on thing going on where you'll be trying to move the camera like this way and then it'll just immediately like turn around on you depending on the area. Now it actually makes sort of a, a bad sounding noise, a dissatisfying sound uh, when you don't successfully do damage to the enemies. Again, like, you could only attack or hurt enemies in the air, so w whenever I was attacking them on the ground, it was making, um, you know, sort of like an alarm alert noise. Yes, Scarlet, you have to fight the camera. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Encrypted Printer. Yeah, no, I totally agree, man. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the stream, I wrote this one off hardcore, like, when it came out. I just avoided it for a long time. But then decided to finally fire it up, and I, I really enjoyed myself. The game's on sale on Steam currently for $7.50. Really? I might have to buy that. Alright, sorry, we're skipping the cutscenes. Alright, so... This also requires us to use another weapon, which we're actually going to get on, uh, you know, just a couple levels from now. There we go. We want to actually come here first. Now, just a reminder, I only beat this game for the first time last night, so you're not going to get, like, you know, thousands and thousands of tips and strategies and me telling you exactly what every little thing does, so... This is more or less just for people that want to chill and see what the game's like, and, uh, you know, hang out with me while I play this game. Uh, but I will try to, you know, talk about what I do know about, but I definitely do not know everything. Exit. Good. Yeah, no sale on PS4, which sucks. I actually checked that earlier today. Um, and no sale on Xbox either. Xbox, I'd have to buy it digitally. PS4, I can buy it physical, at least. Whoops. We gotta watch out for these things. This one I should be able to just double jump over? Yeah. And... Okay, we're good. I actually just took a lot of hits there my first time playing this game. DMC versus Bayonetta? Um, I can't actually say anything about that because I have barely played Bayonetta. It's been on my bucket list for a long time, actually. Um, but I just haven't gotten around to it. Yeah, I ended up just going with this one uh, this past week because one of my, again, one of my gamer buddies, uh, you know, he was kind of raving about it. He was like, man, I really love this game, but everybody just, like, took a dump on it. Um, and I see why he really liked it. I, you know. Uh, let's see. Actually, I do want to come get these. I didn't even realize uh, these were the posts I could destroy. I'm not getting many orbs for them, but some is better than none. 
You can shoot them from a, a distance, just like that. Boss time. We have to smack him in the face. Or we can parry him. I'm almost kind of tempted to try to parry him. Let's see. Can we do it? Probably not. Got him. We just <laughs> we parried his attack. Parrying in this is basically you just have to attack their attack at the right time. It's not just like a, a dedicated parry button, like in, say, Dark Souls or something like that. Hey, Jeff. Nice. Christian Printer says this game does a lot of neat, uh, neat. Yeah, a lot of neat cinematics and dynamic shifting of the levels. Yeah, absolutely. Yep, exactly. That that was one of my problems with um, Devil May Cry Five is that I felt like I was just kind of being funneled down the same looking hallway for. You know, a lot of the game. Uh, I mean, the combat was a ton of fun, but um, it just wasn't. The variety wasn't there uh, in like the env environments and whatnot. The level design. Um, this definitely has, uh, you know, uh, some very interesting, uh, you know, scenery, which is really cool. So, um, so let's go to shop. We have a couple of upgrade points. Again, I'm going to save my red orbs. Um, so let's see what our abilities are. We'll do enemy step and then we will go ahead and upgrade death coil and aerial rave. Boom. That will, uh, yeah, that's a good one. Um, so, you know, ebony, ebony and ivory, I don't know if I really will upgrade this too much. I think what I'll end up doing is, uh, you know, boosting its basic power and whatnot. But as far as, like, actual different attacks, I'll probably just skip on and focus on other things. So, there we go. Mission 2. Just start that. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that, Jeff, for sure. Absolutely. Jeff says, dude, the DMC fanboys are super toxic. I learned that a couple years ago. Had no idea. Oh, yeah. I guess you mean just like Devil May Cry fans in general. Yeah. That's the idea. All right. So we're actually going to, you know, we've been tracked down by this girl. Her name's Kat. Uh, we're being taken to the Order's headquarters. And uh, it turns out that, uh, you know, Dante here is, uh, I guess what's called a uh, Nephilim, which is actually the third difficulty level. Where he's, uh, you know, he was birthed uh, from both a human and a demon. The demon, uh, in this case, is Sparta, who is, uh, you know, a character from the original series. And uh, you basically meet up with Virgil right there, who's his brother. And, uh, of course, you don't know that yet. After this level, you will know that. And so basically, Dante's brought here to 
Uh, I guess remember a lot of his past? Because his dad apparently put a spell on him or something that, uh, not really put a spell, but like, you know, wiped his memories when he was like seven or eight years old or something like that. The story in this game is kind of interesting. There, there's some interesting twists and stuff like that and, you know, interesting plot points. Some of the story gets pretty ridiculous and, and dumb, but, um, you know, overall I did enjoy it though. It was an interesting sort of, you know, modernized take on, you know, Devil May Cry in general. It's, I had fun with it, so. So there's a key here. Which means there's going to be a door later on that we could probably use it on. Oops. I was trying to get that little pouch so I can get some more red orbs. Yeah, I hear I hear that, Jeff. Yeah, I actually I had watched uh, some like analysis videos of the Devil May Cry games years ago, and uh, you know, um, clearly some of the guys that were were you know producing those videos were like hardcore DMC fans in general, and um, I was just like, yeah, uh, I don't know if I really agree with some of this. Maybe I'm just not hardcore enough. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I do know that like a lot of the hardcore fans, they do not like this game, like, at all. So... Alright, uh, we're gonna have some new en enemies introduced here, and we're gonna also get ourselves a new weapon after this fight. All right, so these guys actually have shields. Ah, ah, tough guy. So if you can, you want to just try to juggle them over and over again. But you have to, you have to get a, uh, you know, find an opening. But we're gonna get uh, our first weapon right here, and to use it, you have to hold in R two. This is the Arbiter. And with the Arbiter, you can actually break their shields. But you can also launch them into the air like that. Oops, I was trying to roll and I was press still holding in uh, R2, which was not good. All right, good deal. Who's there? Alright, so I don't think I can actually get across there. I've tried it, and it just... yeah. Just not working. One of those things where I feel like you're supposed to have the proper dash from later on in the game. Not even that much later on in the game. We get it uh, very soon. This floor right here is something you can bust through with your gauntlets, which, again, I don't have. Alright. I guess we'll just fall down. Yeah, it is actually kind of interesting how some things are gated off on a first playthrough, and, you know, again, the intent is for you to go through it again with a full arsenal.
All right, so when enemies turn gold like that, you can't actually do any damage to them. So you've really got to watch out for that when you're playing this game. Hey Mark, welcome back. Dante. Did I hear that right? And now that we have our uh, arbiter, we can bash open some of these doors. The doors that can be busted open with the arbiter have like sort of like notches in them. Actually, getting close to being able to get our. Uh, our health cross. This is something we'll be able to open up with another weapon we get later, which is the Osiris. Oops, did not see that guy. Oh, I didn't think he was going to do a double attack. Gold attack. You just want to wait. All right. This is going to be our first. I don't even know what you would call this place, but. You have to go to this place multiple times uh, on level two to get several upgrades. Uh, I mean, so Xeon, you can do you can do a lot of stuff on just a new game regularly, like your first run. But yeah, there's definitely more you can do on New Game Plus. All right, so they're gonna give us the uh, our first hook ability right here, and so you hold R two, and then with these red ones, you can actually throw out a hook, and then. Psh, bring stuff out like that. You can also bring enemies towards you. Now there's another one we're going to get later on in this stage that does the exact opposite. Which it pulls us towards wherever, you know, the hook goes to. So we can pull ourselves towards enemies or we can um, pull ourselves towards objects. And these are going to be heavily used mechanics, you know, as the game progresses. So, you know, and it'll probably take you a while to get used to them. Trying to get, um, you know, your mind in the right place. <laughs> Through most of my first playthrough, I was pressing all the wrong buttons. Because there's so many different button combinations in this. Yeah, it's the sort of gameplay mechanic that uh, I wasn't really sure about at first, but, um, you know, when I got the hang of it later on in the game and it became more second nature, it was, it was pretty fun. What now? Hey, Big Helm, welcome back. It's almost 3 a.m. in the UK. Yeah, it is pretty late over there. I started pretty late tonight. Scarlet asks, are those doors worth the second playthrough? Um, yeah, I don't know. Because I haven't been through all of them. But I would say that it would potentially make the second playthrough more fun because you have more at your fingertips in terms of okay. abilities. So what else have you got? And then you have more places you can actually go to. Uh, as you play through the game. So I would say, you know, whether they're quote-unquote worth it or not, um, probably doesn't really matter, because I think you're going to want to just play the game again anyway, because it's fun. 
and they'll just give you more to do on the second run. For some of them could potentially house, you know, permanent health upgrades and stuff like that, as well as, uh, you know, some more doors like these. Maybe some of these uh, hidden doors are, are behind some of those other doors. I don't know. Kill all enemies within the time limit. Okay, simple eradication. See, I even right now I'm like, ah, oh, pressing all the wrong buttons and stuff like that. One of my big problems with the controls in this game is that in some of the old Devil May Cry games, I think the first one, you had to hold one of the triggers to like bust out your your launcher attack or your guns or something like that. And I still do that just by second nature because I played the first Devil May Cry so many times. And um, but what it is uh, ends up happening in this game is I end up busting out my secondary weapon that I, I actually wasn't intending on using and doing the wrong thing, like in this case, the Arbiter is a really slow weapon. It's very powerful, but it's very slow. And, um, you know, enemies can uh, just interrupt me. Oops, I did the wrong thing there. Getting ahead of myself. These first couple of levels are absolutely like training stages for, you know, getting you ready for what's to come in the rest of the game. So they just gave us the hook shot. Now they're making us use the hook shot. Sparta! They're here! They're here! They found us! What the hell happened to you? We've got to get out. Now! Hurry! Come on, quickly! Mark asks, are all these Devil May Cry linked together in the story? I mean, all the primary games are. This one is not. This is just kind of its own thing. This was a one-off. Uh, uh, basically a one-off that Capcom went for, and... I wouldn't necessarily say it failed, because, I mean... It did well enough to warrant a definitive edition later on, so... But, uh... But yeah, they never went back and tried doing a follow-up. Yeah, Jeff, De Devil May Cry was one of the earlier PS2 games I played as well. Like, one of the earlier PS2 games I just sunk a ton of time into. And it's still one of my favorites. I had thought about actually trying to go back and relearn it to do a stream this month, but uh, it's probably not going to happen. I'm not sure if I'd be good enough to just jump in blind. Okay, cool. So we can get our health cross. What's cool about buying the health cross is it extends your health bar, but it also refills it at the same time. Oh, and actually, you know, I could probably go ahead and, you know, do something else here. There we go. Alright, so you can hear those guys breathing. And it means one of those, uh... Oh, you know, he's probably behind this door, actually. Never mind. Alright, we'll just skip him. We'll be back. Alright, this is where we get the other weapon. Is that?
Alright, there it is. Let's go get it. So now, just like the Arbiter, we have to hold L2 instead of R2. Thing. Is there anything I can get here? I don't think there is. I always scour the walls for like the little pouches and whatnot. That way I can try to get some red orbs. Oh, speaking of which, um, oh, the door is actually shut behind me. Uh, oh wait, no, I'm getting this mixed up for another area. Never mind. There we go. But now we can cut this open. Ah, uh, there it is. Okay. Well, gotta go back this way. Gotta use the Arbiter again. It's a very basic, you know, uh, you know, level design for 2013 standards. You know, it's like they give you an ability and then they make you use it to get through the level. And that, that's basically what that is. Very common game design back then and uh, probably still common now. All right, so now we're gonna get the the blue hook, I believe. Okay, so L2 and then square. Basically the button that you use to activate your firearms combined with one of the uh, level two shoulder keys. And yeah, when I first played this, I was like, man, someone's uh, Someone on the design team clearly played a lot of Castlevania Lords of Shadow. This game's a lot more fun than that one, though. I said it. Uh-oh. 
Alright, now we have the Switch. There we go. Not a Nintendo Switch. Alright, bust this open with the Arbiter. Three. <laughs> Scarlet says, I wonder if we can handle a third pair of shoulder keys. Yeah, oh man, I don't know. What am I on Jeff says, this is the second game you've played this month that has me thinking of firing up the game on, on your end as well. You did a 100% Rondo run the week after I played it. Hell yeah. Yeah, so the guys with the shields, little tiny dude, you can actually snap their shields from them. Anybody else? I guess not. Jeff says he's a fan of the back buffers on the elite controllers as long as they're they're placed correctly. Not sure if you really need them though. At least not yet. Yeah. You know, I can't really imagine um you know, games really requiring that sort of thing. Uh, for like, you know, super competitive games though, um, it helps. It's like having a lot of extra keys on a keyboard, being able to bind functions that you wouldn't really be able to bind on like just a standard game controller. But I'm getting out of here. I don't think the average game really needs that, you know? It's nice having the option, but I don't like mandatory, I don't I don't think it's gonna be that way for a long time. Alright, there we go. And that is level two. There are 20 levels in the game. And just like previous Double May Cries, they call them missions. Now, apparently the game's really lenient in terms of your final rating. Um, like you can still die a ton of times and it won't even have any sort of effect on your overall rating. So just keep that in mind, like the first time you're playing this. All right, let's do Demon Evade. Uh, so this is R2 plus R1. It's like your other Evade, uh, except you have to press both right shoulder keys at the same time. All right, start mission. You remember this place? Yeah, I remember. Hmm, did not mean to take a hit. Ah, man, I keep falling for their second attack. Chainsaw guys. Hey, Crestline. And we'll just uh, pull him forward. <laughs> Dante, the gateway's 
ready. Come on. These green uh, pouches up here will give you green orbs, which gives you health back. So if you ever see those, it's good to get them. This is one of those doors that, as far as I'm aware, you can't actually access until your second loop. Because we have uh, the Osiris, which is this one right here. It's an angel weapon, apparently. Uh, we'll get another one, which are these throwing blades. And with the throwing blades, you can charge them up and then throw them into the door, which opens it. Now, it's entirely possible there might be a way up there on the first run, but I haven't figured it out yet, Dante, so. Over here. Okay, and I'm going to come on over this way. We'll get ourselves a key. I like those fixed camera angles. It's a call back to the, uh, the old games. A lot like Devil May Cry 1. <laughs> right, so we're actually not going to be able to cross here just yet. But this is where we're going to get our actual air dash. So basically we're going to end up being able to double jump across and then air dash to finish it. Oh, there's another one of those guys. Get those red orbs. Another small devil star. Means I don't have to buy one. I can just save my red orbs. The more of those we can get built up, the easier the uh, later bosses will be. The less likely we'll have to do those boss fights perfectly or anything like that. Okay, so that guy is mm, just gonna say he's gold, which means I can't actually attack him. All right, I see. Another green pouch over here, so I want to go ahead and attack that. Get my health back. Go on up here. I don't think there's anything over here in the corner. Nope. For anyone that wants to check out this original, original version of the game, I do recommend the Xbox 360 one. Because uh, from what I've seen, it actually runs at a slightly better frame rate overall. Like, I watched a Digital Foundry video today, and there are some parts where this one dips down to like 20 FPS. But the, third, the Xbox 360 one Another will stay up wrote. closer to 30. Uh, up closer to 30. But uh, I didn't really have too many problems with this one. Um, you know, I expect lots of frame rate drops for this era of games. You know, Xbox 360, PS3. But if you absolutely want to play on the original, original versions of the game, then, you know, um, of the two, the 360 one's the way to go. Alright, so now we can actually air dash. You have to hold an L2 and then press X in the air.
Now, you have to make sure that you let go of L2 if you want to double jump. Otherwise, you'll end up air dashing when you don't want to. You can hold in L2 as you do that, and you'll sort of uh, float down. Now we warp back out. Dante. 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 Really is you. Right, he's gold. What I'd like to do is try to time my attack to hit them like right as they come out of their gold phase. Sadistic. Yeah, Dante will do like a quick turn into the camera if you do like a really good combo. He'll also do it when, um, you know, like the battle has ended. All right, so now that I have my air dash, I can actually kind of come back up this way and come and get this guy. Now, it's entirely possible. Ah. Uh, I messed that up big time. It's entirely possible I might be able to air dash and attack that door, but I don't think I can even reach it, even from that top platform. Oops, I went too far. That's fine. It's not a big deal. Yeah, and there's a door up there, which I... Oh, is that the one I have the key for? All right, let's see. Um, okay, actually, I think I can... Uh, let's see. I think I'm supposed to get that from the upper platform above me. I don't know, I might be able to do it this way if I just sort of cheat it. you notice I can't really rotate the camera around here. Oh, now I can. Okay, cool. The camera was fixed as I was coming up. Oh, too far. Oh, and I don't have the right key for it either. I'm not sure what key I actually got. I'm because I did get a key earlier. Yeah, and I don't have Argent keys. I don't think I found a single Argent key yet in my my uh, sessions with this game.
They must be pretty well hidden. Alright, so now we can actually go across. So I haven't really explained it, but the big bad guy in the game, his name is Mundus. Um, he's basically, uh, you know, the highest level demon there is. And um, basically has the entire planet under his control. And um, he controls people with a drink. It's, it's really dumb, actually. <laughs> And so what we're going to do is actually infiltrate the drink factory. Um, and uh, we're going to stop the production of it. Yeah, virility. And that's the name of the drink. And it keeps people docile and complacent. So there are these cameras that spot us on this level. We have to actually track them down and destroy them. Chainsaw guy is gold, so I gotta jump up. Uh, Quake Nerd, no. Nope, 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 nope. And actually, technically, I already have. I did it on the Quake 2020 stream, or 2021 stream. I didn't do a full playthrough, but... I'll do a full playthrough eventually, but it's not going to be blind. You guys know I don't do blind stuff... ...normally, so... I'll probably cover it eventually as like a full playthrough, but I still haven't gone through it yet. All right, let's get that guy. Ah, too far. That's fine. All right, we grab the eyeball camera. Hey, snake eye. <laughs> All right, now we can fall down. Stop you. Great. Virgil sent me the camera locations for this area. Best of All right, let's do a quick look around. There's another vital star. I hear someone breathing. There we go. Now this part right here we can't get past unless we have the gauntlets from later on in the playthrough. So that's something for loop two. 
What the hell? Alright, these guys right here, you need to shoot with your guns or dodge them, but dodging them is really hard. Nicely because done, they, they basically spin up, charge up, and then fly straight at you really, really fast. And so the second you see them, you want to uh, you want to just shoot them. Oops. Oops, Just the wrong buttons. All right, for this guy right here, I think I can just dash across. Yep, just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and just skip the upgrade thing right now. I think I'm fine as is. There you are. Here I am. This isn't good. It's the walls. Get out of All right, here. Now we have to just run. Run and jump. Alright, so now we have color-coded enemies that are introduced. For the Frost Knight, we have to use the uh, Osiris on him. Basically, if an enemy is blue, you have to use blue on him. If the enemy's red, you have to use red on him. They apparently changed that in the Definitive Edition, and you can attack enemies with any color in that. However, the correct color, you'll do more damage. Missing. Alright, see you at Crestline. I'll be here a little while, so pop back in later if you're around. Alright, so we don't actually come here yet. Alright, let's actually get this guy. Oops, I messed that up. I pressed the wrong buttons. I actually did not want to use the Osiris, I wanted to just use my regular sword. Oops.
There we go. Use copper key. Man, has it already been an hour and a half? Oof. Okay, reach the goal within the time limit. So this one we just have to move, that's it. This one's actually pretty easy. I think the first time I did this, I had like 30 seconds left over. So unless you're really terrible at platforming, this should be a gimme. Oops. There's gonna be a mechanic later on where we can actually boost off the uh, the blue hooks. Yeah, there's the exit. And that's it. Yep, another health cross, cross piece. Yeah, these load screens demonstrate different combos you can do to build your style meter. So many different ways to link attacks and whatnot. It gets pretty overwhelming, actually. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I mean, I sort of did. I wanted to see if it would take me back into it. <laughs> Probably just uh, quit secret mission. Alright, I want to go ahead and come across here. <laughs> One more. Not enough Argent keys, yeah. I just can't find those Argent keys. I hear another one of those breathy guys. I don't know where they are. Oh, he's up top. Try to come over here, get this guy. Nice, got him. After this level, I think I'm gonna use the restroom. Take like a two minute restroom break. I was super tired before starting this stream, and I pounded down like a ton of uh, caffeine. Got a lot of red orbs, which is good. It means I'm going to get my next health cross upgrade uh, sooner. So for those of you guys that are familiar with Devil May Cry, but not necessarily this game, uh, we do get the Devil Trigger gauge uh, later on. Devil Trigger works a little bit differently in this than it does in the original Devil May Cry games. But it's still insanely useful. Um, but I wanted to follow that up with, um, we'll also get Devil Trigger Gauge Extends, just like we get the Health Extends.
chainsaw. Sadistic. Yeah, the combat in this game is so much fun. Yeah, it really is, Jeff. It's super fluid. Did a parry. I love that you can use the hook to like pick enemies up off the ground. You launch them into the air, then you no, right back up. Alright, these dudes can be pretty tough to deal with. They're some of the harder enemies in the game. So you can try to parry their attacks, or what I do is I just use my uh, Arbiter. Now you want to kind of sit back, because they, they'll turn around and attack pretty quickly. Oh crap, I missed. Yeah, when you fall into a hole, you don't die immediately. You just lose a little bit of health. I am running. For sections like these, you just end up having to redo the whole section. It is, yeah. I was thinking about that when I was first playing this. I was like, man, it just a lot of the uh, the the themes in general are f from other works, like like they lives. I just seem to drag on forever. Church. <laughs> the police have released footage of the terrorist responsible for the recent attacks at Saint Agrius's church. He goes by the name of Dante. Remember his face, people. If you see him, inform the police immediately, but do not approach him. He has a history of physical violence and is a known sexual deviant. 
This is Bob Barbas. Just doing God's work. <laughs> so this is uh, another one of the guys that Mundus, the big bad guy, has in place to control the public. <laughs> This game definitely has a conspiracy theorist vibe to it. Um, but in the case of this game, uh, the news organization there is set up to try to control the public. Uh, so, yeah, definitely a little bit of social commentary going on there. And let's see, items. I think I need 2,000 for my next health cross, and I'm very close to it, so I'll get it on this level. Uh, so let's do Arbiter. Uh, let's get these boosted up just a little bit. Osiris, Shredder. Very satisfying. All right, I'm gonna let this sit here actually for a few moments. I'm gonna go uh, use the bathroom. Mundus is the president? No, he's not the president, but he's, uh, uh, it's hard to explain. I'm not gonna explain it. <laughs> Jeff says, what? TV never lies. <laughs> Just like the internet. <laughs> Everything you read on the internet is true. <laughs> All right. Uh, be right back. Right. Let's keep this party going. Not a big party, but we have a small party. Thanks, guys, that are hanging out with me tonight. I do appreciate it. Uh, you can change the difficulty at any time, by the way. Um, but we're going to leave it on Devil Hunter. All right. Um... Now there is DLC you can get, and this is the virility factory. I was here years ago. So we're basically the next few levels are gonna be us finding the source of the drink that they make. The drink has ingredients that this way, I think. have demonic power or Instead something like that. Before. It's weird. Yes, but it was during an out-of-body <laughs> experience years ago. I'm flying around in spirit form. Yeah, in limbo. Virgil says it could be an effective intelligence gathering tool, but I can't do it at will. So, how did you do it before? It was triggered by extreme psychosomatic trauma. The nightmares. What are the nightmares? It's in the past now. So this game, like a lot of modern games, has just uh, characters talking to each other as you play through the game. You know, divulging story and things like that. So I'm technically in the real world right now. I'm not in limbo yet, but you get thrown into limbo in pretty much every level, and that's where you do all your combat. This is where they store the merchandise ready for export. It's funny. Once you're in limbo, all you have to do is retrace your steps back to the mixing room. Should be easy enough. Maybe. But the demons may sense you once you're in limbo, so stay alert. And once I've reached the mixing room? You'll be able to descend deep down into the factory. And kill me a succubus. 
Yeah, the succubus is actually responsible for creating the uh, the stuff. It's here. And Cat here can basically send us into limbo so we can kill enemies and have fun. And that's what we're gonna do. So now we're in limbo. Yeah, right? Makes sense. <laughs> what took you so long? You actually notice that I I rely on my standard uh, just simple combo attack with my sword because it's actually really effective. It's powerful, does good damage, and keeps things kind of simple for me, you know. And I'll branch off from there, but my my simple four hit combo is you know my bread and butter when I play this. Oh, I, I I always miss that. Always, always, always miss it. Hey, All right, could you now we've me got. To the uh... So again, this is a colored enemy. I can only use the colored weapon to do damage. So in this case, demon weapons. Oops. See if we can hit this with. Um, no, can't get it. But I can get this one. There we go. Yes, yeah, so we're at two thousand orbs, which means I will be able to get my next health cross. And an upgrade. Let's go for Osiris. Shredder level two. Uh, items, health cross. I mean, in a way, I could save my money and then get the health cross when I need it. But nah, we're just gonna go. I'm just gonna buy it right now. The reason saving your money and buying it when you need it is handy is that you know you might run into one of those. Um, you might run into one of those things like when you're low on health, and so you can get all your health back for free, basically. Just 
looking around. Alright, we have to get across. I think this is about where I stopped last night when I was doing my second run of the game. Oops, too far. We can actually go back this way too. We don't have to go that way. Oh, not what I was trying to do. There we go. Oops, god, man. Pressing all sorts of wrong buttons. There's anything down there I really need. Well, let's see another one of those guys there, though. That's right. I don't think I ever figured out how to get up top there. Oh, no. Actually, it looks like I might be able to do it like this. Yep. Looks like there's another hidden door up there. Nice. Yeah, since I'm still fairly new to this game, I'm still discovering a lot of, like, new areas and whatnot. Like hell, even right here. Oops. I need the gauntlets for that. Yeah, this is definitely second loop material. Oh, I see a key though. So that was worth it. Is that an arbiter key? Argent key, not arbiter. <laughs> Argent key is what I meant. You know, all my terminology wrong today. That's what happens when you get really tired. Oh, not where I wanted to go. Ah. Losing health. But that's fine. Alright, uh, I think I should just fall back down. There we go. I heard some spiders walking around.
jump. <laughs> nice, got them both, or all three. That's probably the right way. Let's go back this way. Hey, thanks, Trevor Student. I appreciate that. Like it didn't really matter which way I went. Another vital star. Dead end. Where the hell is that mixing room? Argent key, nice. Let's see what this is all about. Kill all enemies within the time limit. Enemies only take damage from within the active zones. Okay, what are the active zones? Ah, okay. interesting.
Ah, oh, just barely missed it. Cool, we get all of our health back. That's nice. Be a close one again. Oh, come on. Damn. I should have had that. I messed up. Try it again. We got it. We got it this time. Let's see what we get. Yep, another health shard. Nice. We just extended our health bar. Worth it. See what we have here. Yeah, I need 3,500 now. Uh -huh. Yeah, they're like there are multiple dodge types. It's it's crazy.
<laughs> Never realized those faces last time I played. <laughs> well, that's pleasant. What in the shitting hell is going on here? The mixing process. <laughs> but it's the source we're interested in. I'm guessing our succubus is on the other end of that. That's right. This yeah, same here, Jeff. Trouble. It's a cool Get concept. We don't want to touch that goop. Oh, he's gold. Do it once. get this health. God damn it, see the camera is just doing its own thing again. It's like, you want to be looking here. It's like, no, I want to be looking where the damn health is. <laughs> limited. Yeah, in the uh, definitive edition, they added an actual lock-on. to see if there was actually anything else in that arena, but apparently not. Alright, mission six. Uh, let's go to the shop. We've got three upgrades. We've got Stinger. You know what? I've I barely use Stinger. It's something I use all the time in the uh, original Devil May Cry games. But uh, it's not something I really use that much in this one. I think it's a little bit harder to do here. You have to like double tap up and press a button. Whereas in the original game, you just hold a button and like press up and attack. It's pretty easier to keep going. Actually, switch headphones. Been wearing these big studio headphones for now what? This tunnel will lead you to quite a long time now. How do I get down there? I can only get there from limbo. I can't fall. All right, so this part you just want to go as fast as you can. Just skip all the enemies.
Open up. <clears throat> oh well. There really was an egg time. All right. Oh, what a stink. Getting close to our boss fight. Yeah, I mean, just really cool looking environments at points. Uh, I don't think I need to use that statue. door over there. I don't think I have the key for it, though. Let's see. Yep. Ugh, smells of sick. Alright, definitely not a family-friendly part. <laughs> I'll, I'll let this play out, because this is one of the most dumb, over-the-top parts in the game. In terms of, like, the cursing. <laughs> so you must be the secret ingredient. I'm your prime date, you ugly sack of shit. Dante the Demon Killer. Has a nice ring to it, don't you think? You want to kill me? You can't kill me! I'm 1,200 years old! You don't look a day over 12,000. Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you! Fuck you! Fuck you! It's so tough. Alright, so we have to whack it in the head. When it's red. Okay. Now you notice that its health bar is both white and yellow. That means it's got multiple phases, multiple health bars. You want to go this way? Phase one. It is possible to parry uh, her attack. I mean, time it right. Oops! Oops! Oh, 
Oops. God damn it, I did it again. Oh, okay, I got it that time. Whew. Hey, hey, Deadly. How's it going, man? Got it. Got the parry. the parry. Relaxing and enjoying this stream. Hell yeah. You're dumped. All right, last part of the boss fight. As far as scripted boss fights are concerned, this game does it pretty well. Go to the shop. Get upgrades. We'll go to Eric's slam, slam level two. And there we go. I'm gonna save my red orbs. Yeah, we'll meet you there. See you soon, Virgil. All right. So now I'm actually working to kill the Fox News ripoff. And we press right to actually switch our uh, demon weapon. And 
then I can jump and slam down like this. Just like the Arbiter, you can use this to bash through shields. You can also knock enemies in the pits. Basically, you'll just insta-kill enemies if you do that. Oops, not really what I wanted to do. Yep, I knew I was going to fall. That was me pressing the wrong buttons. He's off. Oh, he's gold. Got a switch. Actually switch back. I actually prefer the Arbiter against these guys. Switch back over again. Alright, I'm gonna have to latch onto this. Get that. Okay, we're good. Uh -huh. Let's give it a crack. Just doing God's work, are you, Bob? There we go. Now we can boost from those. Gonna have to take a detour. Another health upgrade. That's a large one, actually. Oops. Whoa. Ah. Oh. <laughs> I totally screwed that up. 
And again. Oh no, I got it. Okay. Okay. There's the tower. Back on track. Whatever you are, get the hell out of here. Skip that. Poor bastards. Ah, man, I'm still pushing the wrong buttons. <laughs> Go on, get lost. All right, it's a new enemy type here. Great point. We've got seventeen hundred orbs.
Oops, wrong button. Okay, he's off the ledge. Let's actually come back down here. Hey, hey, hey. Going down. Smashing. <laughs> Smashing. Alright, there we go. I could technically knock them off the ledge if I want. Hmm. No copper keys. Crestline has made it back. Welcome back, Crestline. Hope you're having a good Friday night. All right, let's see what we got. All right, it's gonna be 3,500. That's it for now. I'm coming for you, Bob. Oops.
Alright, so there's this blind guy. He apparently knew who your dad was back in the day. You have to recover his eye, and then he tells you how to get to the boss. More upgrades. Alright, mission eight. Uh, it is available on Xbox 360, yeah. Man, a lot of vital stars. I'm probably not going to have to buy any in this playthrough. There you are. Whoa! This is this part you want to watch with the train. I missed the- I didn't even see the hook. Alright, this is a pretty cool fight. Because the train constantly moves. Nice. Environmental kill. <laughs> that was pretty sweet. I don't think the greens give you any red orbs. No, it's just health.
Yep, no Argent keys. Go figure. I didn't realize there were three of them. The nest. All right, this is where we get the uh, the dude's eyeball. And uh, this glass can break, so you have to be careful about that. You can actually shoot the harpies down to the ground, and then you can hook them. Otherwise, they can dodge your hook. Alright, so there's a few different ways we can go to get some items. Yeah, it looks like those wall guys give you about 50 orbs, so it's definitely worth going for them. The little the little pockets aren't really of all that valuable for what it seems. Okay, we'll do this one next. Zero upgrades.
Hmm. Yeah, there's a key over there, but I'm not really sure how to get it. Just figured it out. Cool. Yeah, I should have shot for the left one first. Right, this is back towards the beginning. Wow, he still hit me. Damn, I tried rolling. Didn't work. Like I said earlier, those big dudes could be tough to work with. Tell if I'm actually doing anything. I see the stuff kind of coming apart, but I don't know, man. Okay, right on, Jeff. I will be here. Alright, 
I'm just gonna forget about it. All right, now we give him his eye back. It is I. The eye. You have it? Have you? He basically gives us lots of advice for the rest of the, uh, the level. than 400 to get my next health upgrade. You were blinded and imprisoned here for how long? Hundreds of years. I notice that everything's pretty much upside down, and this is basically like a reflection of the right side up tower in the real world. All right, these are the witches. I'm gonna try to grab their little orange swords. That'll break their shield instantly. They will also shield other enemies. That's basically a load screen. <laughs> Splatterhouse does that too. Fancy way of doing a load screen. It's like, well, they have to warp anyway in the story. Let's just make it a load screen while we're at it. All right, let's see what happens. to protect you. 
All right, now we got the devil trigger. You are way more powerful in double trigger mode. So just like in previous Devil May Cry games, you just attack enemies. As you do combos and stuff, your Devil Trigger gauge builds up. Once it's past a certain point, you can activate it. It gives you a little bit of health back, and you do just tons of damage. Now we're just loading back. Dante! All right, a little bit of health back. <sighs> I guess we'll go this way. I can buy my next trigger cross. Oops, that was the devil trigger one. <laughs> I meant to buy the uh, the health cross. Oh well. Wanted to do the uh, devil trigger one eventually anyway, so that worked out.
troops. See what I'm doing, game. Jump, dash, all right, got it. I don't have gold keys. I know I have a copper key. Discover your full potential. Mainly, I just want to kill the demon king named Mundus. And if you do kill Mundus, who would take his place? Dun dun dun! Set up for a plot twist later. All right, so we should be getting close to the boss fight. Mission 10. After this, we're... Well, at this point, we're pretty much halfway through the game. We are three hours in. I am no longer suited to violence. I cannot proceed. Upside down for a little bit. Boss time. We're close to it.
Here we go. Boss time. Spin on this. <laughs> My personal view on the terrorists is that they are disgusting, degrading, ghastly, sleazy, period, and generally nauseating. The worst of them is Dante. The whole world would benefit greatly by his non existence. I'm taking you off the air. You think so? I wouldn't bet on it, you little shit. All right. So. Uh. I'm gonna slam down into the ground like that. Found out you can apparently parry some of his attacks. So I'm actually playing right now. Several people have now come forward and investigators have pieced together a shocking history of violence. At age eight, he attacked and killed the head nurse at St. Lamia Orphanage. She was described as a sweet old lady who particularly enjoyed working with children. Not Bill O'Reilly, right? <laughs> I was thinking the exact same thing. Attacks against the prison officers just doing their jobs. Between 16 and 17, he became involved in gangs, drug peddling, and is believed to be responsible for over a dozen homicides. And worst of all, he was also a well known cruiser in the seedier districts of the city, rapidly spreading sexual disease of the unholy kind. It ain't that the best kind, Bob. Boom. <laughs> Thanks, YouTube. I learned that from YouTube today. Hey, John Smith, welcome back. Definitely have 
<laughs> he definitely had pedophile eyes. But like he said he was gonna kill her anyway. And then he did. Like totally. Since that horrific attack, it has come to light that Dante is involved in the terrorist organization called The Order. I have a message for The Order. The whole world is looking for you. Every camp on every street corner, every police force in the country and worldwide. But we will find you. And we will destroy you. It's only a matter of time. This is Bob Barbas of the Raptor News Network. Just doing God's work. this broadcast to bring you breaking news. The terrorist organization responsible for the recent attacks has been located and is being stormed by SWAT teams no. as I speak. Two of the terrorists identified in these images are known to be in the compound. Bastards. The third terrorist has been cornered in another part of the city in a separate police raid. Rest assured, those responsible will be brought to justice at any moment, dead or alive. This is Bob Barbas of the Raptor News Network. Just doing God's work. Oh, God. hit all three. Yeah, it is Jeff. It's a really cool boss fight. And just the visuals alone are crazy. So I guess by destroying the limbo version, it made the real world version of Bob uh, vulnerable. I guess that's what happened. <laughs> Thanks for the GG, Jeff. All right, we got Aquila. Or Aquila, I'm not sure. Yeah, this is the weapon we needed to access those blue doors earlier in the game. You know, the ones from a distance. Let's go to Aquila. Bayan, Bayan. All right. Mission 11, the order. Guys, I'm on my way. 
All right, switch over. This is not the definitive version, Ego. This is the original PS3 game. PS3 360 version. Who are you, fuck nut? All right, the butcher. Right, you can actually see a head inside their little pocket, their orb. I was playing this first on a CRT, I couldn't see that. That's one thing I've been doing lately is playing PS3 games and 360 on CRTs instead of uh, HD displays. They have a really nice, like, natural look. Wanted to see if there was anything over here. And apparently there's not. Alright, so now we can charge up and then throw. So we need a couple hundred more orbs. Uh, but yeah, Jeff, no, it is really interesting because, uh, you know, a lot of the earlier games in particular, they support 4x3. And, uh... And it's been rumored that some games on PS3 will actually run better if you run them at a lower resolution. In some cases, the games look better on a CRT. Hey, 720p on modern displays does not look very good these days. That's another thing I did, Ego, is I played the Silent Hill HD collection on a CRT, and they looked a lot more like the PS2 versions. It was pretty cool.
Over here, saw boy. Hmm. Shit. You can actually parry that. Let's see if he'll do it again. No. Or double trigger. So they do explode, and I'm pretty sure they it that damages you. Alright, I need to get rid of this lady first. Play Devil May Cry 5? You mean on my channel? Uh, yeah, eventually. I mean, I bought that game right when it came out, so, you know, I've played it plenty of times before, just not on my YouTube channel. Hey, Greg. Yeah, glad to see people in here that enjoy this game. Or even if, like, they haven't played it, like, they think it's cool to see at least, you know? You know, I'm glad I finally got around to playing it, because I, I put it off for so long, because everyone was like, it's a terrible game. And uh, I ended up really enjoying it. Oops, I was looking at chat. I deserve that hit.
Man, I'm still trying to get used to this weapon again. It's not going to open back up. Oh, there he is. Oh, he was on the other side. Hey, hey. See, now's a good time to upgrade my health, get all my health back. I don't have to use a health item. So that was a good time to use the upgrade. We'll get the upgrade. Oh yeah, I bet, man. Getting out of town after COVID, it's a good feeling. All right, new enemy type. There's a bunch of different ways you can parry these guys. What I like to do is wait for them to teleport and then dodge when they come back out. like that. Leaves them wide open. Teleport. Dodge roll. I just do simple combos like that. Apparently you can parry like that. Ooh, nice. Got it. What the hell was that? 
that. Cat. Ah, yeah, where did you go, Greg? Inquiring minds want to know. Mission 12. I think after this level, I will probably, um... Probably take a quick break, uh, use the restroom, grab, grab a drink, and eat some food. It's by the time we're done with this stage, we'll probably be almost four hours in. I went to Puerto Rico. Oh, wow. It's pretty far away from you. I spray, you bring the roof down. There, now pull it. Basically, this whole series of levels is trying to protect the Let's go. the orders headquarters and protect the two people that are still inside, which is Cat here and then Virgil. Cat ends up getting kidnapped at the end of this goes? level. I know this place like the back of my hand. Wow, this game's got the Dark Souls two spinny and spinny circley thingy. You can just spin around in circles. <laughs> really smooth. Come on. Hi, quick. Stay there. Saw you. Hey, wait. I think I saw something. Shit. Cat, stay very still. Leave it. The girls are ahead. We need to move. He's gone. Let's go. You okay, Cat? Yeah, I'm okay. What did you get for food, Jeff? I'm gonna instantly regret that large combo. <laughs> oh man. Heads on your head! Face down! Cat! Get out of sight! He's running! Get out! No! Quick! Get in that room and hide! I told you not to run! Triple bacon cheeseburger. Oh no man, that sounds amazing. But right now, we've got to find Virgil. Was that yeah. Wendy's or something else?
Dairy Queen. Oh man, Dairy Queen was open that late for you? I need to try Dairy Queen sometime. I've only ever gone there for their ice cream. Alright, so this is basically just going to be a big enemy rush. Oops. What do you mean, how are the controls so far? This isn't my first time playing the game, Ego. Uh, I mean, the controls are great. It controls really well. Alright, I don't need that. Hey, gun tanks. Mess that up, man. Alright, so now we get the shotgun. I actually don't really use it that much. Although it's obviously good for those guys. Two more minutes, Virgil, I can keep the demons off 
your back for as long as you need, but I can protect Cat from the feds. Step on it. Understood. Two minutes. That's not what I wanted to do. Apparently you can exit Devil Trigger mode. If I activated it, then deactivated it by accident. Let's go, Dante. Wait. What? What about Kat? There's no way out in the real world. No, we can't help her. Let's go. Jeff says, I'd love to visit San Diego one day. <laughs> She's in the real world. This place is going to blow any minute. He's right.
Yeah, I talked about it on the last stream. My dad used to live out in San Diego for a few years, and he liked it a lot. I just realized I should probably upgrade my gun. Not much on the item front. Um, all right, guys. Uh, well, like I said, uh, I think I'm going to take a break. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to go use the bathroom. I'm going to grab a sandwich. And then uh, yeah, when I come back, we'll finish the last seven or eight levels or so. But yeah. I'll be back.
All right. <sighs> Go pet Patchy for us. Well, she's actually here right now. I already gave her one belly rub. I've been petting her an extra amount today because uh, one of my parents' cats passed away last night. And, you know, for some people, it's like, oh, my parents' p cat passed away. But it's like they see the cat once every couple of years because, you know, they're long distance or something. But, you know, I lived with them when they got the cat and I was there for a couple of years with the kitty. And I've seen the kitty every other week since then. So it's like, you know, she was a good girl. And uh, so kind of kind of a somber day for me and the whole family. Um. Yeah, and I've just been petting Patchouli even more. Because it's like, eventually one day, same thing's going to happen to her. Yeah, you can't come over here, though. <laughs> she wants to jump on the desk with me. Um, yeah, I don't have the, uh, the camcorder rigged up right now, which is why I haven't been doing the camera on here, but I just let her in. Yep, so Cat gets kinda kidnapped. Now we have to go rescue her. Does Patchy run like a maniac at night or does she stay pretty chill? Uh, yeah, it's not necessarily just at night. But, uh, yeah, she does do that. Yeah, I totally forgot we have to do the nightclub first. This is a pretty trippy level. So basically what we're doing is we're going after Mundus' woman because she is holding his baby. And so as a uh, leveraging mechanic, they're trying to get Mundus's woman and trade the baby and the woman for cat. Of course, it's a video game. Things don't go as planned. <laughs> Baby mama drama. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll. That's what brings me here.
Oh, damn. 21? Yeah. Yeah, that's like one of those definitely could happen anytime sorts of things. The thing about my parents' cat is she was only 10 years old. And all of our other cats, at least the ones that haven't gotten run over by cars, uh, have all lived to be like 15 plus. Yeah, that's that's the thing about my parents' cat is that it was just it was very very unexpected. She just got ill one day and then uh, stopped eating and then she lost all energy and then they oops not supposed to do that. They took her to the vet. They gave her some medicine and then the next day she just went like completely comatose. <clears throat> and then they had to take her back and. It was not good. Yep, that's right. I have to hold down the R button on these red tiles. R R2, I mean. Oops. Your brother's cat had cancer. She died at 12. Oh, jeez. Cancer, man. I swear. Yeah, this is kind of a tricky section, or I, I should say it's disorienting at least. Because you need to switch over to L2, but you also want to press jump sometimes. You end up dashing in the air instead of jumping. Yeah, me too, Jeff. Yeah, I'm right there with you. It never gets easier. I went over to visit my parents earlier, and I, was, I told them, I was like, man, I cried myself a headache earlier. <laughs> like, I haven't, I haven't cried that hard in a while. It's like, damn. And, like, she wasn't even my cat. Like, you know, not as in, like, not like Patchouli, where I, you know, I wake up with her every day. It's just, it's hard. Congratulations! You're still in the running towards becoming the most top fucking idiots. Now, you can come to the closer. Yeah, overshot that. Exactly. Unconditional love. Yep. Right, we have a time limit now. Funny that looks like a YouTube play button. What's the hurry? Oh yes. The torture and suffering of that little brat. Don't worry. Once Mundus is done with her, she won't feel a thing. Nothing. At all. Uh I actually kinda wanna go to top way. I think there's a secret.
Yeah, exactly. One day they're all right, one day they're not. It just comes out of nowhere. I think that's one of the problems with, you know, tending to pets is that you don't know that, I mean, this happens with adults even, like just humans. Like you don't know what is going on. You don't know like there's a cancer brewing or something like that. And you know even less so with animals because they're not talking to you like humans talk to you. You know, you can't, it, it's hard to tell if like something's bothering them internally, if they're like really in pain, unless they're like really, really, really in pain. So by the time like, you know, you find out, it's like, it's too late, it's way too late to do anything about it. And we think that's that's what happened. There was either some kind of blockage in her gut or she had cancer or something like that and just had no idea. <sighs> Sorry guys, depressing conversation. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, Ego. That sucks. Yeah, I totally agree, man. I totally agree. Yeah, that's the other thing, Ego, is that pets are extremely expensive to work on. I mean, humans are too. <laughs> But a lot of humans have health insurance, which helps. One of my ex coworkers told me about pet insurance, which I might start looking into.
Yeah, it can get stupid pricey. Like, just a diagnosis would have been like four grand. And then the surgery would have been like another seven. It's like, and you don't even know if it's gonna work. Uh, it's just bad all around, you know? <clears throat> All right, more of these guys. Oops. Yeah, you're right, Jeff. You're right. It's something I've always had a hard time doing. You know, living in the moment and actually enjoying life for what it is. See what we got. So we need to go to five thousand. All right, got some health back. the music I like the soundtrack in this game I think it works really well get that skim bag you call an ass down here <clears throat> I'm running out of patience let's end this yeah no I agree Jeff uh, honestly this <laughs> for what they did I think the story is all right um All right, so now we have to use the right element on these guys. Same with this one. Yeah, at the time of its release, I wasn't a fan of the direction. But now that we've gone back to the more traditional Devil May Cry with Part 5, it's like I can respect what they were trying to do. And I almost appreciate it a lot more now because it is different. 
Now, if this was the only way they took the series afterwards, I'm not sure if I would have agreed. But of course, that was like eight years ago when this game came out, and... You know, if I don't care now, why would I have... Why should I have cared back then? I don't know. I think the big issue for me is I, I've always felt like if you got a good formula, don't change it. Either stay true to it or um, or just don't do it. You know, if you want to do something different, then just make a new franchise. So this is one of those weird ones where I've kind of gone back and now that I'm playing it, uh, it's like, you know, I really don't mind it. It's pretty cool. It's weird, huh? <laughs> no, it's not Devil May Cry 5, Crestline. It would say Devil May Cry 5 on the stream title if it was. <laughs> and it would run at a much better frame rate. Your turn, Barbie. Yes! This is exactly the opportunity I've been waiting for! Come on, baby, let's make Daddy proud! Ugh. This is another one of those kind of screwed up boss bosses. <laughs> you know, I've been looking for a chance to unwind. Yeah, Jeff, I mean, so the Devil May Cry stories have been kind of all over the place. I, I enjoyed most of the story in part one. Uh, you know, the way it was executed and stuff like that. Part two is obviously part two. We just try to forget about it. Never did finish part three. I don't remember a ton about part four story. But part five was just like convoluted as all hell. And just kind of, I don't know, with all the character changing and they tried to make the characters like overly emotional. Yet during gameplay, they were just super sarcastic. I don't know, just, just clashed. This game, it at least takes itself seriously through and through for the most part. There's not really, aren't really any like crazy goofy shenanigans that go on. Plays it very straight, which I think it works for this one, you know? Yeah, I need to try to do Devil May Cry 3 sometime soon. I've never actually finished that game. I heard it gets really tough.
Get out here and fight me, monster! We're sorry, Gameplay and Talk. Your video has been demonetized. Cry 3 didn't sell low for its time and it became a greatest hit. <laughs> I mean, that means generally you've hit a sales milestone. Yeah, I don't, I can't agree with that statement. Devil May Cry 3 is one of those games that was just like people raved about back in the day. I mean, I was working at the game stores when uh, that game was, you know, on the market. Touch Mundus. Sorry it took me so long to get back. Regarding your trade offer, I'd like to suggest a counter proposal. The life of the girl oh. for the life of your child. So now they trade up. But Virgil ends up killing Mundus's son at the last second, and then Mundus goes ape shit, and then well, you'll see. I'm not gonna play the cutscene, but uh, let's see. I just realize I haven't really really messed around with my abilities much. Hey, Mark. Oh, hi, Mark. So Mundus has made everything go to hell, literally. Oops. And your team is trying to escape.
<laughs> nice one, Crestline. It took too long. How did I miss that? Hey, Dasan. So Mundus has basically merged uh, Limbo with the real world, and so now like the real world is kind of in shambles, <laughs> or at least the game's leading in that direction. I mean, I think he actually caused some kind of shockwave that was sort of doing. Oh fuck it, this story's it's not actually that confusing. It's just you're better off on your first playthrough actually letting the story play out. But to save time, I'm not letting the story play out. Even though a playthrough is six and a half hours long, we're already at four and a half hours, so... But this is the last stretch. We go up this big-ass tower that we've seen throughout the whole playthrough. And then we actually fight Mundus, and then we will fight Virgil. And then that'll be it. Once Mundus sees you, all hell will break loose. Stay close to the tower entrance. Well, it took too long. Whee!
You need to keep them busy while Virgil makes his way into the tower. Oh. You'll have a few seconds at best. Wait. Okay. Whenever you see enemies, your first instinct is to fight them. I mean, I'm probably not going to have 5,000 by the time I... Well, I don't know. I might. The corporate offices are heavily defended. One exception is for a There. We will reunite with Virgil. Vitality star, vital star. Hey Jeff, thank you very much for that. 
Much appreciated. Oops, God, pressed the wrong one. This, one day, all of humanity will be enslaved to Mundus with these poor souls. So this is corporate hell. I need to stop drinking that stuff, Jeff. I do diet soda, but it's just got all these sweeteners, artificial sweeteners that are... I've read as, like, even as a diabetic, it still has a major negative effect on my blood sugar levels. But man, it's just, I'm, it's a really tough habit to break. Even like a 40 ounce, I would just gulp down almost instantly. Uh, I guess it's supposed to go up. That's what I had. That's what I felt. All right. Yeah, carbonated water is nice. You'll find that it's harder to get like that flavoring though. Whatever you do, don't get out of floor one. Right. It's no turning infested. back. Oh shit. But yeah, it, um I do love carbonated water myself. I need to go out and buy some soon. I think I ran out a couple weeks ago.
Oh shit, I'm stuck. <laughs> I've never seen that before. Did it again. Dante does not like that corner. Yeah, I mean, it takes a little while to get used to just straight up carbonated water without flavoring. Which, that's the best kind for you, because it's literally just water with bubbles. You know, there aren't any, like, artificial, uh, sweeteners or anything in them. So, ideally, that's the way to go. So, you'll find your grocery stores have, like, store brand unflavored... They call it seltzer water. Other parts of the world will call it sparkling water. But yeah, just look for that and try it out. For me, it's got to be like ice cold. If I drink it warm, it's it's not very enjoyable. But if it's really cold and I drink it fast, yeah, it's that carbonation, man, it's so good. Damn it. Hey, Aaron. How have you been? Wasn't fast enough. <laughs> and then I fall in a hole. Good job. Well, almost again. Okay, well, that sucks. Hope you feel better soon. I had a headache earlier today myself. Thankfully, ibuprofen fixed it.
get some health back. You shouldn't be scared to check it, Jeff. You should just do it. Something like that's really easy, you know. And if it's bad, well, then at least you know. You should just do it, you know. And if it's not bad, then it could just very well be uh, just something else. Maybe stress or... Um... You know, lots of other things. I mean, it's the thing, though, Jeff. It's like, you know, you say your family has a long history of it, but the longer you put it off, you know, if you do have a problem, the more potentially damaging it could be. So check in for it is a good way to get on top of it. And uh, you'll feel better about it being on top of it if it is an actual problem right now. All right, so I just got Kablooey, which is like, it's kind of like the rocket launcher. Except it uh, latches on the enemies like a remote mine. Find the West Wing Sky Bridge. Uh, Mark, I can't remember. Do you have an Xbox 360? You still just have a Wii U. Yeah, I knew that. I just couldn't remember if you had a 360 or not. I mean, the Wii U's newer than the 360 and PS3.
Alright, I guess we're gonna go ahead and use one of these. Been nice if they brought this out to the Wii U, actually, because um, Capcom did have a few games on the system. But they brought out Resident Evil Revelations too. It's funny, had this actually come out in the Wii U, I probably would have bought it. Whereas I completely avoided it on the other systems. Even though I was kind of against it back in the day, like, because the Wii U is my primary console. Knock, knock. I was playing games I wouldn't normally play on other systems. Like, I actually played through Resident Evil Revelations and I... Um... <laughs> I even played a little bit of Call of Duty Black Ops 2. I won't ever touch Call of Duty. <laughs> oh man. Mission seventeen. Too far. Dude, again, seriously, come on. Okay, we'll go this way.
Uh, I'm gonna play it eventually, I'm sure. Just not anytime soon. And yeah, I have been asked a hundred times already. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it looks great. Ivory key. I think that's my first ivory key. I didn't even know there were ivory doors. Uh oh, I can't see where I'm going. Mess that up. Ooh, look at that. I'm gonna go with Devil Trigger Cross. Oh, yeah. See a door. Is it an ivory door? Let's see. Oh, gold door. Eh. I did this one the other day, okay. Shit, I'm dead. Chainsaw guy got stuck on enemies and hit me when I landed.
And again. This chainsaw guy wants to just constantly stay gold. I got greedy. All right, we got it. Devil trigger cross fragment. We're not going to get three more. <laughs> we need four. And yeah, that's not going to happen. <laughs> Whoa. Did I lose that much health? I, I must have. Yeah, I'm getting so burned out at this point. <laughs> Playing the whole thing in one city might have been a bad idea. But I was like, I gotta do it all in one go. I have a feeling no one's gonna watch this. I just gotta do it all in one go. Just get it over with. <laughs> Oops, I screwed up. Oh man, that fire. That's why I uh, 
That's why I died. I didn't realize the fire did that much damage. Where am I going? Another mission down. Getting close, guys. We're getting close. You know, I'm buying all these upgrades and it's like I haven't played the game enough to know that I should be using them constantly. <laughs> Alright, we're not going to get uh, 4,000. So I'm going to go ahead and just start spending my money. Kind of like that. Hey, Trevor student.
Well, this is kind of a weird puzzle. We have to go down each of these tunnels. So, what do we have to do here again? Kickstart the backup generators in limbo to overload the system so I can hijack the quantum encryption algorithms. That's it. But, uh... Could you say that first bit again? So, you have to kickstart the generators. Four of them, right? Yeah, that's right. One in each tunnel. Let's get to work. Hey, Death Seed? Yeah, um, I... It's kind of the same with me, too. I was actually really surprised at how much I enjoyed this one. I just played it for the first time this week. Hey, Sea Snake. That's one generator up and running. Good. I'll reboot the server. Now, line up the power conduits with the corresponding server. This is where things get kind of shysty. Like one of the only puzzles in the game. I know I'm gonna have to redo this. for all four and we'll be set. If I do this on time, this will have saved us about an hour's worth of cutscenes. <laughs> I almost feel like I should have just played all the cutscenes out at this point, but whatever.
That's two online, Virgil. Good. Rebooting. Uh, shall I line it up? You can. Or you can get the other generators online. Up to you. that I'm not expecting that. Okay, did you die already, please? I didn't trust that. <laughs> they were too far away. Damn it. Shotgun only goes so far. <clears throat> Another in the bag. Any problems? No. I'll line them up later. down there last time, but I couldn't figure out how to get back up. Uh, eh, screw it. I'm starting to think I'm not supposed to go back up. Yeah, okay. That's how you do it. Urgent key. Kill the tyrant within the time limit, okay. Wasn't too bad.
<laughs> that counted as a cool parry, apparently. Thanks, Mark. All done. Great. Here we go. Okay, listen up. To pop this beast open, you will need to line up four conduits with their corresponding pistols. You get that? Line up all four. Got it. Where'd you learn to do that? What? That computer stuff. Hacking? Taught myself as a kid. I guess this gave me a sense of control. We never had that, did we? No. I always felt that something was amiss, hidden from me. So did I. It's like a burning feeling inside. Exactly. I knew this. Peel back the layers of the truth would eventually out. Guess I channeled that energy to hack you. You? How'd you find release? Killing demons is getting late. With the computer stuff, it sounds good too. One more. God damn it. I messed it up. Screw it up. So not in the mood for this right now, game.
Okay. Wow, I actually got it. Jeez. <sighs> so this basically unlocks Mundus's lair. You know what you have to do. Uh, Mike, that's a. I mean, it's a good question, man. Honestly, Dante's design is like, it's fine. I think just a lot of people saw like the trailers and were like, "Oh God, he's emo," but he's not really like that. Do not try and kill him. He is immortal until I shut down the Hellgate. The thing is, it is quote unquote adult oriented. There's tons of cursing, and it's a more real world ish kind of story. It, eh, I don't know how to describe it, man. I think the cursing and the more adult theme was a big turnoff for fans of the other games, but also the, um, you know, just the change of uh, design, the character design and general theme and things like that. Um, but I mean, when it comes to visuals and the gameplay, like it's it's rock solid. So how much you're going to like it or hate it is going to be dependent on, you know, how much of those other things bother you. The gameplay? No, I don't think the gameplay is bad at all, Mike. I think it's really solid. It's very fun. I mean, this is my second and a half playthrough and I'm still having a great time with it. I'd like to go back and do a new game plus so I can get all the extra areas and play in higher difficulties. Why did you kill my child? I'll let this play out. Dante's trying to lure him out. Ask you again. Why did you kill my child? Because you killed my mother. Oh yeah, Jeff, I could see that pissing people off too, for sure. It was revenge. I see. It was more than that. Oh. It was for freedom. Freedom? You seem to have all the freedom you need. The freedom to murder my heir. I'm not talking about my freedom. I'm talking about mankind's. Mankind. And what would mankind do with freedom, do you suppose? Because when I arrived, they had it. And what do you think they did with it? They fought, they killed, they starved. I brought prosperity, I brought structure. What have you brought? Besides violence, war, death. Uh, Death Seed? No. I doubt it. <laughs> you know, I've done this. You're right. It wasn't for mankind, it was... It was for revenge. I gotta tell you, Killing your child like that? Watching it explode into little wet chunks? Hearing you scream like one of your little demon bitches?
shut this thing down. So basically, they have to shut down the Hellgate. Mundus goes apeshit and turns into his true form. Well, not really true form, but... Uses, like, the city as a shield. This is our second to last boss fight. Good save. Look, he's showing cracks. Dante, you see that? Yeah, I see it. He's still in there. We need to get in there and kill him. Come on, let's go. Why was his body in there? Mundus is merged with his physical body. That's why he's protecting it. So if we kill his body, we kill Mundus. Go the other way. Harry.
Oops. Okay. Woo. <laughs> Thought I messed that up. Oh man, I glitched out the boss. Dude, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with that slam. I guess the evade is where it's at. Playing in playing Dark Souls now, folks. All about the dodge roll. And I'm okay with that. I did it. <laughs> so now Limbo is officially merged with the real world. So, you think the game's ended and you defeated Mundus, but now Virgil wants to take over the world. Or be a ruler, anyway. Dante disagrees, and now you have to kill Virgil. Or kick his ass, anyway. So Virgil's actually the final boss. So you can kind of wait for him to do a dive attack and then punish. Or you can try to parry some of his attacks. Oops. I 
like that. Yeah, but gasp! <laughs> right, Jeff? You have to end up killing him with a devil trigger as well. Don't be. Man, that parry's tough. I found it easier to just wait for him to do an attack and then punish it. Like an airborne attack, especially. Like that. When he does uh, the knives, you can actually shoot them down. Like that. Carry that attack. It's not too late. Yes, it is. Now he's gonna form a doppelganger. So we want to use a devil trigger. I screwed up. I should have waited till his health was lower. Because as long as his doppelganger is out, he's gaining health back.
could have punished that. Jeez, man, he's just teleporting all over the place. I can't even see where he's coming from. Parried. I think I need to do the finishing blow in his regular form with Devil Trigger, and I, I keep doing the Devil Trigger way too early. God damn it, dude. Seriously? It's not enough. It's 
funny is I didn't have this problem yesterday. <laughs> I think I might just have this boss wrong. Maybe I'm supposed to kill his doppelganger in the devil mode. See you, Mark. Seriously, I have no fucking idea what I'm doing right now.
Uh, I'm trying to do that and my shots are just reflecting. Like, that's what I thought I had to do too, but it's not working. Unless the game is glitched. It didn't work that time. Maybe it's because when I tried, the doppelganger was on top of him. And the, the doppelganger is what was blocking the shots, I think. Realize there's a lot of screens here in here. I didn't notice when I was playing on my CRT. The world is under my protection now. You've chosen the wrong side. You're not human, Dante. You never will be. I'm going to uh, mute the end game credits because I know it's a licensed tune, so I don't trust it. But uh, yeah, that is DMC Double May Cry. Um, <laughs> kind of anticlimactic because I didn't really let many of the cutscenes play out. And uh, you know what's funny about that is it still took me s over six hours to go through the game. Well, I guess technically under six hours because I, I did take a break couple of breaks actually and I did start I don't know gameplay probably started 10 or 15 minutes in so but still um, I didn't save as much time as I had hoped I would but it's okay hope you guys at least enjoyed uh, the playthrough I do appreciate uh, all you guys hanging out all you that did I know it wasn't a very big turnout tonight but I had a feeling we weren't gonna get many people watching <laughs> Because this game is not really, um, 
you know, every time I, I mention DMC Devil May Cry to people, people are like, oof, oof, that game. Uh oh, that game. Yeah, no, I had a good time with it. That's my second completion in a couple of days, and uh, it's fun. I enjoyed it. You want to come over here, Patchouli? You want to come over here? Come here, Patchouli. Hey, you. You want to come on over here? Come on. Come on. Here you go. Come on. All right, Patchy's on the desk now. You can't see her, but she's here with me. Yeah, there were some pretty big production values in this. I mean, all the mocap is pretty solid. Hey, no problem, Jeff. Thank you for hanging out. I appreciate it. If you weren't here, I don't think I would have had much company. <laughs> Especially for the second half of the stream. Yeah, thanks to everybody else that uh, was hanging out tonight. I do appreciate that. Thanks for the super chat earlier, Jeff. Hopefully your uh, hopefully your your Dairy Queen doesn't uh, catch up with you tomorrow. Yeah, I'll let the credits roll out, then I'll do the old Patreon uh, slides and stuff like that, and then I will stop the stream. Uh, I'm going to do my best to have some kind of stream late Halloween night, so watch out for that. And, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what it's going to be, but uh, I'll try to have something cooked up for you guys. Aaron says, Dairy Queen is great. I'm just trying to stay off carbs and sugar so he can't have it. Right on. Maybe you guys can hear Patchy purr. Let's see. <laughs> it's hard with this mic. Uh, yeah, my recording setup is uh, a little weird right now, so I don't have the uh, the camcorder plugged up. It's in the other room. I was doing some pinball streaming, so... Uh, yeah, I didn't bring it in for this stream, or last stream, for that matter. <laughs> I think that's everybody's weakness, uh, Crestline. Carbs, sugar, and dairy. A lot of people worked on this game.
Crazy, the Unreal Engine had been around for 15 years prior to this game's release. All of that middleware as well. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's good, Aaron. That's, that's wise. <laughs> it's very wise. I still have a fast food problem myself. Hey, I didn't count any deaths at least. Even though I had to use the uh, the gold orb. Son of Sparta with brand new remix enemy setup and behaviors. Try this difficulty level next. So that sounds cool. Alrighty guys, that is going to do it for me. That was DMC Devil May Cry. Whew, it took a while. <laughs> so, uh, yes, I agree, Aaron. Pizza is one of the greatest foods of all time. Absolutely. Yeah, no problem, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah, that's going to do it for me. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I'll try to have the archive up sometime tomorrow. And uh, like I said, I'll try to be back on Sunday. I guess technically tomorrow night. It's 3 a.m. for me, so... <laughs> Which means it's Saturday, so Sunday night. I'll try to be back... Uh, Going over uh, for dinner at the parents' house, and then it's Halloween, so I'm not sure if I'm going to stick around for trick-or-treaters or whatever, but um, yeah, I'll, I'll try to come back early-ish and do some kind of stream. Not sure what I'm going to do. I'm going to have to think about it over the next day or so, but I'll try to cook something up for you guys. So, but alrighty, that's going to do it for me. 
Uh, I guess wherever you are in the world, have yourselves a fantastic day or night. And uh, until the next one, take it easy, guys.